The topic for today is flexibility training, stretching. And I want to clarify some misunderstandings, misconceptions. Uh, first of all, this is not yoga. Uh, yoga contains a lot of movements that will increase flexibility, so there is stretching contained within yoga. However, for the sake of clarity, yoga translates as union. And so, uh, if you're doing stretching, but there's no meditation, then you're not doing yoga, you're doing stretching or, or calisthenics. Uh, yoga is a specific practice, and actually, whatever movements or uh, postures are contained within yoga are really only stepping stones towards the ultimate goal of being able to sit quietly. And so it may take years to condition the body and develop the flexibility so that a person can actually sit and remain still and meditate, which is the true uh, meaning of yoga. So. If you have any objections to yoga, you can actually just put that out of your mind. And we'll focus on stretching. Um, another misconception um, is the idea that stretching actually is detrimental for athletes, especially power athletes. And sometimes there will be uh, referencing studies that show that there's a decrease in power output uh, after the subjects stretch and so um, again context is everything in life there's there's no particular movement or position that's uh, inherently good in all cases or inherently bad there's uh, good performance and poor performance um, there's movements that may be beneficial or good in certain circumstances and the same movement could actually be detrimental or bad in other circumstances and so again context is key and that's something that generally doesn't come across in videos and on YouTube is we see isolated movements it may be demonstration or it may be instruction however there's no way to grasp uh, to grasp the actual context, what's the appropriate application, what would be the contraindications, like who should not be doing these things. And so uh, you have to understand that for any type of stretch, it may be very beneficial or it may be contraindicated for you. And again, it's relative to context. And so uh, we do have coaches that say, oh, stretchings, uh, Waste of time, it's no good for you, it's actually harmful. More times than not, you're gonna find folks making those statements or people that are very bad at stretching. They're, they're very inflexible. They've never put in the time and they avoid putting in the time. And so it's easier just to say don't do something than it is to actually uh, recognize that, that it's a weakness that you have and so that's a problem across all professions. It's just kind of faking it when you don't know. So um, to say that stretching is not good for athletics, that would be like saying strength training is not good because it makes you too bulky or saying that um, nutrition isn't important because it's all about the training or to say that you don't need really sleep, that you can get by just on adrenaline and enthusiasm. So these are obviously ridiculous statements. So I will say that an athlete that is not also working on his or her flexibility is, is an incomplete athlete, is not as good as, as that person could be. And you're gonna find that in any sport, the top performers have uh, excellent flexibility within the range that they need to utilize in their particular skill or their particular sport. Um, so, with the stretching, uh, forward bending in particular is an area that can be very controversial because we have a world-renowned authority, Dr. Stuart McGill, who often educates about spine, uh, spinal biomechanics. A lot of emphasis on lower back, especially with his, his classic book on low back pain. 
And so a lot of times trainers will reference that and if you see, say, a forward bending movement, they're gonna say, oh, that's, you know, Stuart McGill says that's bad for your back. Well, I'm not an expert on Stuart McGill's teaching. However, I know that he also talks about context and I, I haven't come across him actually saying that forward bending is bad, rather, in certain circumstances and he also references load and velocity so when you start combining forward flexion of the spine with load or with high velocity then this is when you can run into some problems where, it, where it's causing injury uh, naturally if there's disc herniations um, forward bending very well may be contraindicated in that case but as a general statement um, the spine needs to move in, in all directions, in extension, in flexion, lateral flexion. So uh, it needs to be flexible. So forward bending is an important component of the whole if you want to uh, strengthen your back, reduce lower back pain, and just be a well-rounded athlete that feels good and um, has longevity, isn't walking around with stiffness. And so um, also forward bending is extremely beneficial for stress reduction. And that even ties into uh, the emotional and mental state. So it's very good for alleviating stress. Okay, so uh, what I wanna do now on the practical part is just a little bit of discussion and demonstration on forward bending. And then I wanna show you a complementary exercise that is beneficial in most cases to pair with the forward bending. So, um, and keep your questions coming because your questions are actually fueling these conversations and these lessons. And so if we're looking at forward bending, now it could be standing, it, there's many variations. It can be one leg at a time. Right now I'm gonna demonstrate using just a two legs of seated forward bending. Okay, so it is a flexion. However, what you need to understand from the beginning, and it doesn't, it's not so important where you're starting from. You may be very stiff or you may already be somewhat flexible or even very flexible. However, you're just working at your level and it's about your progress. So you cannot model someone else's movement that maybe has a different body or is at a totally different experience level. You have to understand the basic alignment and then you work at your level and if you want to progress at it, you just keep chipping away at it over time. Okay, so. The flexion here, um, the common mistake would be to just kind of flex the spine and just kind of fall over. And now, if you are very uh, advanced and you know how to relax, then even just doing this, this actually can be beneficial if you're relaxing. But most people do not know how to relax in that position. So in most cases, to just come here, that's going to actually be problematic and cause... Uh, Discomfort and maybe even aggravate if you have, say, a, a disc herniation or if you have some type of lower back uh, condition. So, what you want to understand is that the flexion should occur in the hip itself, which is a ball and socket joint. So, sort of like a the hinge of a door. There's that central axis here, that fulcrum, and we're actually moving here, keeping the stability in the spine. So we're not actually doing this with the spine under load, rather we're doing this. And with the spine itself, we actually are extending. So I want to extend, see I'm lengthening the spine here. So you're lengthening the spine and the actual rotation or flexion is occurring primarily in the hip. This is stable, so I have that core stability. Okay, so see the difference? This is just kind of folding over and you see that the spine itself different vertebrae are acting as a fulcrum here. And instead, at least to start with, you wanna really extend. So an easy way to, to initiate the extension is to reach your hands up as high as you can. So you're already starting with the extension now, instead of collapsing and coming down and thinking forehead to knee, instead, you wanna think of reaching up and forward bringing your chest over. So now you see the range of motion in terms of my head is not so great, but the range of motion in the hamstrings is much greater, okay? And that's really what we wanna focus on is here. 
And so with this, I start just relaxing and breathing. And as I flex my, as I flex my trunk, the movement is still here and I'm extending forward the whole time. I'm not letting that core become loose. I'm keeping that kind of shoulders back, chest forward type of idea, like if you're lifting weights and now I'm folding. And then I start relaxing here as I breathe. And over time, as you continue to breathe and relax, relax your mind, relax your body. Breathe, don't hold your breath. Over time, you start extending more. And again, you have to work at your level. You can't push too much because you're putting, again, too much loading in the spine. It's not ready. You're not conditioned for it. So that's a couple key points on forward bending that you need to pay attention to attention to. Now from here, a great way to pair that is you want to do some spinal extension. And there's a lot of ways to do this also, but what you're going to start with is just your uh, elbows are going to be under your armpit. So you're going to kind of advance your arms a little bit so you see the elbow is just under the armpit here. Hands flat. Just relax down and point your toes. Try to get some extension. So not being lazy with the lower body, but actually kind of lengthening it out. Okay, so you get already start to get that extension there. And from here, you're just gonna lift the chest looking forward and keeping the head in line with the spine, lifting the chest, and as you do that, you're gonna pull the shoulders back. So we don't want this. You wanna pull the shoulder, opening the chest. And now, this may be plenty for you, just here, so you just breathe and Relax as much you can, as much as you can. See so again, you want to extend the entire spine. So you don't want to just fold in half and put pressure here in the lower lumbar vertebrae. Rather, like with the forward bending, you still set the extension. So your chest is reaching forward, and now I push my hips into the floor. So I'm pushing the hips down. I'm not letting this happen. I'm pushing and extending. And then from here, as you relax in this posture, you start extending your arms, but not using the strength of your arms so much, rather lifting, so you're pulling your shoulders back. See, and I'm kind of just wiggling and easily breathing. Okay, not shrugging the shoulders, pulling those shoulders back, lifting the chest, Continuing to push the hips into the floor, looking up. And again, you wanna distribute that extension from the tailbone all the way up, up into the neck. Instead of kind of just folding in half, which is not a good idea and that will cause some problems. You just relax down. You can do that a couple times. So again, lifting the chest, pulling the shoulders back, relax into it and slowly just start extending the elbows. You can wiggle a little bit into place. Everything easy, no pain. Pushing the hips into the floor. And release downward. Okay, yeah, so that extension is a very nice pair with the flexion. So if you're gonna do some, some kind of forward bending, you can follow that immediately with some spinal extension to work that spine kind of from both sides. So give that a shot. As always, uh, well thought out questions are always welcome. Put it in the comments section and I'll do my best to address them.